Good morning, good morning. Welcome back to Coffee in the Word. Move that. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I hope and pray you're all doing well this morning. Uh, was at a uh, uh, two meetings this morning and uh, had a lot of coffee already, so I'm just having some tea. Oh... All right, well, this morning on uh, this Friday, July 21st, um, <clears throat> we're going to start off once again with a passage in Psalm 139, and then we're going to Ezekiel, and then the New Testament reading is from Hebrews. So let's get started. Psalm 139, verses 1 through 12, and then 23 and 24, and as always, may God bless the reading of His Word. O Lord, You have searched me and known me. You know when I sit down and when I rise up. You discern my thoughts from afar. You search out my path and my lying down, and are acquainted with all my ways. Even before a word is on my tongue, behold, O Lord, you know it altogether. You hem me in behind and before, and lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is high, I cannot attain it. Where shall I go from your spirit? Or where shall I flee from your presence? If I ascend to heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in Sheol, you are there. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there your hand shall lead me, and your right hand shall hold me. If I say, Surely the darkness shall cover me, and the light about me, by, about me be night, even the darkness is not dark to you. The night is bright as day. For darkness is as light with you. And that's good stuff. And then 23 and 24. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts. And see if there are any grievous way in me. And lead me in the way everlasting. Good stuff. Good stuff. <clears throat> ah, my voice is a little scratchy this morning. All right, the Old Testament lesson, uh, Ezekiel chapter 39, verses 21 through 29. And I will set my glory among the nations, and all the nations shall see, see my judgment that I have executed, and my hand that I have laid on them. The house of Israel shall know that I am the Lord their God from that day forward. And the nations shall know that the house of Israel went into, cap went into captivity for their iniquity, because they dealt so treacherously with me that I hid my face from them and gave them into the hand of their adversaries, and they all fell by the sword. I dealt with them according to their uncleanness and their transgressions and hid my face from them. Therefore, thus says the Lord God, Now I will restore the fortunes of Jacob and have mercy on the whole house of Israel, and I will be jealous for my holy name. They shall forget their shame and all their treachery they have practiced against me, when they deal, dwell securely in their land, with none to make them afraid, when I have brought them back from the peoples and gathered them from their enemy land, enemies' lands, and through them have vindicated my holiness in the sight of many nations. Then they shall know that I am the Lord their God, because I sent them into exile among the nations, and then assembled them in their own land." I will leave none of them remaining among the nations any more, and I will not hide my face any more from them when I pour out my spirit upon the house of Israel, declares the Lord. And that's good stuff. Good stuff. All right. Uh, the epistle lesson this morning. Hebrews chapter 6, verses 13 through 20. And this one's entitled, The Certainty of God's Promise. For when God made a promise to Abraham, since he had no one greater by whom to swear, he swore by himself, saying, Surely I will bless you and multiply you. And thus Abraham, having patiently waited, obtained the promise. For people swear by something greater than themselves, and in all their disputes an oath is final for confirmation. So when God desired to show more convincingly to the heirs of the promise the unchangeable character of his purpose, he guaranteed it with an oath, so that by two unchangeable things 
in which is it, it is impossible for God to lie. He who have, have fled for refuge might have strong encouragement to hold fast to the hope set before us. We have this as a sure and steadfast anchor of the soul, a hope that enters into, into the inner place behind the curtain where Jesus has gone as a forerunner on our behalf, having become a high priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. And this is the word of the Lord. All right. We'll check out the uh, Pray Now app for the prayer of the day. All right. Let us pray. Lord God, Heavenly Father, through the prophet Ezekiel, you continue the prophetic pattern of teaching your people the true faith and demonstrating through miracles your presence in creation to heal it of its brokenness. Grant that your church may see in your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, the final end times prophet, whose teaching and miracles continue in your church through the healing medicine of the gospel of this, of the gospel and the sacraments. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Uh, well, it just so happens that the uh, uh, the, Revi the Pray Now app has a little paragraph here about Ezekiel, and uh, I'd like to share that with you. And it just uh, that was part of the Old Testament uh, lesson this morning. So, a uh, little little passage here about Ezekiel. Ezekiel, the son of uh, Buzi, was a priest called by God to be a prophet to the exiles during the Babylonian captivity. In 597 BC, King Nebuchadnezzar and the Babylonian army brought the king of Judah and thousands of the best citizens of Jerusalem, including Ezekiel, to Babylon. Ezekiel's priestly background profanely, profoundly stamped his prophecy as the holiness of God and the temple figure prominently in his messages. From 593 BC to the destruction of Jerusalem and the temple in 586 BC, Ezekiel prophesied the inevitability of divine judgment on Jerusalem, on the exiles in Babylon, and on, se on seven nations that surround Israel. Jerusalem would fall, and the exiles would not quickly return, uh, as a just consequence of their sin. Once word reached Ezekiel that Jerusalem and the temple were destroyed, his message became one of comfort and hope. Through him, God promised that his people would experience future restoration, renewal, and revival in the coming messianic kingdom. Much of the strange symbolism of Ezekiel's prophecies was later employed in the revelation of St. John. Interesting. All right, well, I hope and pray that you all have a fantastic day. So with that, be safe, be happy, and be blessed. And we'll see you tomorrow morning on Coffee and the Word. God bless.